I am. We're ready for you. Ready. Look, waiting for you. Yeah. Well, here I am. Let's have prayer first, and then I'll start in on my what I have to talk about. Right Heavenly God. Father, Heavenly Father, we're here tonight to to increase our understanding of the Holy Spirit and what He is done in our lives and what He will continue to do in our lives. Lord, help us as we study that we will gain a better understanding. We ask a special blessing on those who are going through trials right now. We ask a special blessing on Michelle that she will continue to feel good. On Ron Holland, that his uh, treatment that starts tomorrow will be effective. On Iris Ray, who's going to have more surgery tomorrow. And on Gloria. And we hope that the, the mass that they removed is not cancerous because yes. um, we just, that has to be what we're hoping for, Lord. And we know that you know the end from the beginning and you have all of these people in your care and you know just the right answer. And so we put them all in your hands and we ask everyone here tonight to gain a blessing from what we're studying. We thank you and praise you and ask these things in the precious name of our wonderful Jesus. Amen. 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 I have to go get okay. my book because I forgot my book. Um, Sharon called me today. Apparently, they're, they've been recording the um, the uh, presentations each evening, and last night did not get recorded. That is true. So, so um, my bad. Asked if, I could, if I could give, um, if I could give just a little five minutes synopsis of what last night was about before we start um, tomorrow tonight. And so last night was the third person of the Godhead part one. And I've got several uh, things here that I found very important. It says the mystery of the triune God is that there is one God but three persons. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, fully God like the Father and Son. Mm -hmm. And being called the eternal spirit informs us that the Holy Spirit is God, because anything eternal is of God. Amen. The Amen. Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere, and he's omniscient. He's everywhere all the time. And um, he has the ability to know all things. So mm -hmm. when we ask the Spirit to come into our lives, he is, he's God. He already knows. But he appreciates the fact that we invite him. Mm -hmm. yeah. another, another point. Paul um, uh, clearly associated the Holy Spirit with God when he wrote, now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit, and there are differences of it, administrations, but the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which work it, worketh all in all, and that's 1 Corinthians 12, 46. And in these verses, the spirit, the Lord, and God are interchangeable because they are all one. That's right. Mm -hmm. And my last point is the Holy Spirit has abilities that can be attributed only to God. Yes. Uh, eternal, obs uh, omnipresent, and the one who reveals the truth about God. So that was last night. Tonight, oh, you know what? I forgot my Bible. Can I... Will you excuse me for a second to get my Bible? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just got back from the school, and I'm running crazy. Again? I did, too. Yeah, I know you did, Sharon. <laughs> well, I forgot my book, so. <laughs> Everybody's organized tonight, huh? Yeah, we're, we are. 
It just gives us a chance to talk and yeah. You're right. Uh, have you heard anything about Gloria? I know all I know is that she came out of surgery, and that's yeah. all. She's where, totally was the map, where was the map at anyway? Where was the map at? I missed that part. Where I understood from last night that it was in a small bowel. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. All okay, right. I want to start out tonight's, uh, the, it's the third person of the Godhead, part two. And I wanted to read from 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. And let me find it here. Oh. 4 verse 18 it says well we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal and that's the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit and uh, in De Desire of Ages Ellen White says when the Spirit of God takes possession of the heart it transforms the life. And so we're ready now to begin. And the Bible teaches that the ministry of the prophets was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And we understand this. Um, for prophecy came not uh, in old time by the will of men but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's 2 Peter 1.21. So when the Holy Spirit was speaking to these men, um, he was, oops, sorry. He was not, he was not giving them the words. He was giving them the inspiration. And the words were their words. And that's what a lot of people kind of get confused sometimes. It says the Holy Scriptures are the result of God, the Holy Spirit, inspiring the prophets mm -hmm. to write what God revealed to them. And so God reveals these things to the prophets, and the Holy Spirit enables them to um, put it down so that we have all of this information. And that's how the Holy Spirit works in us, too. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have to have somebody talking directly to us. We understand that God, the Father, Son, there's also the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the other night uh, when I was, I said, you know, we, we envision the Father, we envision the Son, but it's very hard to envision the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. nobody has put, you know, drawn, painted pictures or anything else of what they believe. There's just, you know, we have to believe by, by faith. And uh, this, this reading tonight brought out some um, some of Isaiah's uh, uh, writings, mm -hmm. and one of one of the, my favorite ones is in Isaiah six eight to ten. It says, "Whom shall I send, and who will go for us?" Then said I, "Here am I. Send me." Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we are supposed to be doing? Mm. And then um, in Acts 28, 25 to 28, it says, Well spake the Holy Ghost to Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, unto our fathers, saying, Go unto the people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. I... I'm, I, I don't understand that. Pastor, can you enlighten me, please? I'm looking at it again. Um, so it was Acts 28. 
Yeah, 2528. Yes. It's on page 19. Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So let, let me just read this quickly. It says, after, the, after that Paul has spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our father, saying, Go unto these people and say, Hear, and ye shall hear, and um, shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not preserve. For the heart of the people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have uh, they closed, uh, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them um, says uh, uh, be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles as they will hear it now uh, this is these words you know are obviously related to to the Israelites to, to the people mm -hmm. of Israel Mm -hmm. where you know they heard the words they saw the uh the miracles yes. and uh, right. all the rest but he says their hearts were waxed uh he says over here wax grows in other words you know they didn't get it they just didn't get it they just didn't see it even in the midst of you know tangible and uh Evidence. and audible <laughs> truths they just mm -hmm. didn't hear it why? Because their hearts were completely, completely, um, it says vaxxed. In other words, their hearts were completely not sensitive. It was insensitive. They couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Or didn't want to get it. They couldn't, they, want, they couldn't, didn't want it, but the didn't want led that they cannot. Even if they wanted it. And then finally, you know, right here at the end of this text says, um, uh, it says over here, uh, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their heart and should be converted. I should heal them. So there is, there is a hope. He says, unless they, they really want to, unless they want to. So there is, there is this, uh, uh, the, if I may say, the Lord is leaving the door a little bit open. If anybody would hear my voice, you know, let mm -hmm. uh, you know, let them come in. If anybody, but their hearts were so much hardened, just like the the heart of the Pharaoh at the time of Exodus, that you know the Pharaoh just didn't want to listen. Why? Because he didn't want to listen. That's it. He was in complete I think, rebellion. I. I think that they did want the Messiah, but they were so misguided on their uh, perception yeah. of what Isaiah was oh, yeah. saying oh, yeah. that they they didn't want the Messiah that had come. Mm -hmm. So they, they wanted the Messiah that, to come, but they had their ideas about the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And those so ideas, not, those beliefs did not let them see and hear what was happening right in front of them. Sorry, I interrupted you twice, Linda. Well, so is that breathing the Holy Spirit away? I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, in the new American, in the American standard, the new American standard, it's kind of clarified for me is, Go to this people and say you will keep on hearing and will not understand, and you will keep on seeing and will not perceive. For the hearts of these this people have become insensitive, and with their ears they hardly hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart in return, and I would heal them. I don't I I I think what it is is they have gone so far away that they did not and could not understand and hear what they or, needed to hear. Or, or, did, or did, were, were they expecting something totally different than what they got? Yeah. I think they were wrapped up too much in their traditions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's what my wife told me. They didn't want to switch 
because it would cost them too much to change mm -hmm. cost them their whole uh, way of their life. It would cost them uh, their whole, uh, the, the leadership, the, the rigid religious leaders would have lost their positions if they, and they didn't want that. So a lot of it was a neglect because they knew Jesus and they felt that he was yes. high, but they were not willing uh, to give up what they thought or what they wanted in their lives. And that, that's what's happening in today's world. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, some of this reminds me of the book we're, we're covering on Friday evenings, Laodicea. Because people are full of self-righteousness. They're neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm with their own self-righteousness. And until they let go of that and grasp the righteousness of Christ, um, they're going to continue in their mm -hmm. sin and sorrow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that uh, what Jesus talked about was uh, uh, the landowner uh, gave his uh, land out for his servants and then he sent other servants to check on it and they beat them and killed them and and finally, he said, I will send my only son. Certainly, they will recognize him. And what does it say? It says that they did recognize his son and say, well, if we kill him, we're home free. Yeah. I have something to say about um, what Isaiah said, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it seems that the power of the Holy Spirit was to harden their heart or close their eyes. It's, it's by his power whether or not a heart is changed from stone to flesh. And it's by his power whether or not an eye is going to see. So it was his will for them not to get it at that time. Mm -hmm. I had never looked at it that way. Um... Right. It also reminds me of when Paul talks about... Um, different vessels being made some for honor and some for dishonor and the point that he makes about how can the vessel say how or why did you make me thus it seems that the holy spirit and god or god through the holy spirit uh has all of this planned out even to the to the extent that he knew that israel um would reject him and that his whole plan was to bring the whole of humanity into his family, whoever would believe on him. And so at this time, at that time of, the, of him speaking this way to Israel, that just as it says in uh, the narrative of the Pharaoh, that God hardened the Pharaoh's heart, uh, that he also hardened the Israel uh, ears and eyes. Mm-hmm. But I think that you have to look at that in the right context. First of all, we've already gone through that God is love. And, and God says, I cannot be tempted, and I do not tempt. So what you're saying in, in your evaluation is God is tempting. God is doing things. But he has told us that we decide. And if we're not saved, yeah. it's our choice, not his choice. What he does is he gives us the truth. And if we deny the truth, if we do not want to listen to the truth or conform our lives to the truth, then there is nothing left for him to do but to allow us to go on and to believe false things. He did that with the Israelites, as you read about them. There were times when they rejected him, and he said, I leave you unto yourself. You know, I mean, I've done everything I can do. That didn't work out too well for them, did it? No, look, look at look at this way. When did Jesus come? When he came there. I did not come to obey the law, obey, agree with everybody, but to fulfill the law. And the Pharisees had very hard hearts, no matter what you say. But because every time he went and went against what the law said, they said, "Well, it's it's not written in our tablets." Well, I believe these verses, do you hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe these verses do, like what Delper said, is a matter of choice. God is talking here about the choices that people make. Because my husband uh, has 
witness to his family about the Sabbath and the state of the dead, and they don't accept it. And so when we used to go back home and we started discussing it sometimes, they would say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And Steve would say, well, they don't want to hear it because they know they would be held accountable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what God is saying here, I believe, you know, because, uh, you know, they know what God will expect from them. So, uh, so we turn our, you know, even though we see and hear what the evidence of the truth that God has given us, but if we turn away from that because we don't, we don't want to be held accountable. <laughs> so, so if, if so uh, we're, the, the so Pharisees, we're uh -huh. sorry, if the Pharisees, however, had accepted Jesus and everything had gone wonderfully <laughs> and everyone turned to believe on him, Jesus would never have been crucified and the plan of salvation would never have been put into this uh, way. And so part of this hardening of the heart after their disobedience or turning away is part of the plan. And so with, if they had just said, Oh my gosh, you're right. Oh, we repent. There would never have been a crucifixion and thus never a salvation for the human race. I can't agree with that because of the fact that Romans would have crucified him. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. And the Romans would have put him on the cross <laughs> because he would have been a threat to them. We don't know how it would have turned out, Brian. We just know that it that he knew. He's, mm -hmm. he's all-knowing. He knew how it would turn out, and so that's the way that it happened. Yeah. He knew how, if each one of us are going to be saved or not. But he does not control our being saved. He says, mm -hmm. he says, those that are lost will be lost by their own choice, by their own mm -hmm. God does not arbitrarily choose those to be saved and those to be lost. A lot of people yeah. believe that, but that's not the God that I serve because he said when he created us that, that he would give us everything that we needed to be saved. But yet mm -hmm. Adam chose not to be. Jesus said that nobody takes his life from him. He lays his life down and he'll take it up again. So, mm -hmm. so even if everything had been perfectly played out and hunky dory and everybody had accepted Christ, I still think that he would have gone to that cross yes. and, and died because that's what the plan was from the beginning of before beginning of time. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't, I don't know that I, in, in thinking about it, it's just like with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God knew what they would be, the decision they would make. He had the plan for salvation done before. And if, if you think about, you know, it's kind of like you know somebody and you know that they're a real bad gossip. And they just like to tell stories. And so you don't tell them anything because you know how they're going to act and you know what they're going to say. God knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. Holy Spirit knew exactly what was going to happen. He didn't make it happen. Mm -hmm. He let it happen because he mm -hmm. knew what would happen. Yes. Well, they, that's the reason the plan of salvation was put into place. Yeah. It was for us to have a choice mm -hmm. yes it was not because god was going to say you're going to do this this way the plan was there just in case and it's still in there just in case we do not make the right decision yeah it's a choice we have to make mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, god's foreknowledge of those choices exists God knows who is going to choose what because of the circumstances. And he knows even if, you know, he knows how our hearts harden. I mentioned uh, the Pharaoh and, uh, you know, that's what happened with the Israelites later and with uh, Christians later, mm -hmm. right? What happens? God is giving us a choice. And mm -hmm. if we, uh, if we um, 
refuse to accept God at the moment of our choice. Our heart hardens. Next time, mm -hmm. refusing God and His choice and, and, and Him as a choice is going to be easier. In other words, our hearts, our decisions are hardening and hardening and hardening and hardening. Now, can the Holy Spirit, and this is what we are discussing here, it is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can change that around, mm -hmm. you know, but we need to allow him. And uh, yeah. I believe it was you, um, Linda, who mentioned the, uh, the Laodiceans, right? And mm -hmm. the selfishness that is present, you know. Uh, I was just recently, the last week and the previous week, you know, it dawned on me that every sin is rooted in selfishness. Yes. Every single yes. sin is about me because mm -hmm. I want it, because I want it for whatever reasons, doesn't matter what. And, and if that is present, you, we cannot respond to God. Selfishness is pushing God away. Now, uh, in this case, when we speak about the Pharisees, when we speak about the Sadducees, the Essenes, I was just reading about them today you know, and we'll be speaking about them soon. You know, it is interesting, you know, how uh, they made their choices. And that led to uh, crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It wasn't just the last thing. No, it was, you know, it was put in motion centuries uh, before Jesus came uh, to do his ministry. And they were elementary and God knew. This is what's going to happen. Why? Because their hearts are where it is. It's sinful. It's selfish. It is self-righteous and so on and so forth. It will definitely lead to that. Why? Because you just need to touch something in there and they are going to be against Jesus. And did it happen? Of course it happened. So God knows and we need to trust him. Uh, but the Holy Spirit can always change like he changed Nicodemus, like he changed uh, uh, Joseph of Arimathea. And, and others, you know, he changed, the Holy Spirit changes, and that's the power yep. that he has. We're told that David well, was a man after choices. God's own heart, uh, and the reason that David was a man after God's own heart, because every time David messed up, he didn't harden his heart. That's it. That's so right. He repented. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes, I, I agree with everything that was said. I guess the point I was making was that it's the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. working yes. like we definitely all have a choice, oh, yeah. but it is yeah. like underlying. It is the power of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit that makes one see or understand or have mm -hmm. wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. yeah, but we, we definitely have a choice and he definitely knows what's yeah. going to happen. Well, it's, I think it's about time to start our, our prayer session. I'd like to, um, on page 20, there were three passages, Isaiah, Acts, and John. Mm -hmm. The same passage referring to Jehovah, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. In these passages, we find the mystery of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. the reason it's a mystery is because we, we have all of the information that we need to spend eternity with Christ, if we choose that. And so... Um, I don't have anything else to add tonight. Anybody else want to add something? The blessing I mean, is in the, the go. What? The blessing's in the go. We've got to go and he'll bless us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, as we start well, the first... Oh, ahead, I, I was gonna I was gonna make appointment about the second question. Why is it important to understand these things about the Holy Spirit? Well, uh, being the this lesson uh, focus a bit on uh, 
how the Holy Spirit inspired the prophets and what to write, right? So what what if the Holy Spirit did inspire the prophets and God's word was written without that? Well, we couldn't trust God's word and we wouldn't believe him, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, I think that's why it's so important to understand what the Holy Spirit ministry is, his attributes and characteristics, so that we know that God's word is inspired and many people don't believe it's inspired. They don't understand that it was written. Well, they don't understand about the Holy Spirit either. So understand about the Holy Spirit is, is really, really, really important mm-hmm. in our understanding of the scriptures and to believe them. Well, you have to believe the, in the Holy Spirit as much as you believe in the Father and the Son. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because <clears throat> they are, are all one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, I, also I believe that even now, the Holy Spirit leads other people to to be to start talking about about Him at the same time, and we don't know it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's begin our prayer session.